Good? Yep. All right. Did you give Jeff the high side? Okay. We'll call to order the meeting of the Hereford Township Zoning Hearing Board of Thursday, <clears throat> April 1st, 2021. Uh, present in, on this Zoom meeting is Bill Rhodes, a voting member, Ed McGarvey, a voting member, Jessica Vitale, a voting member, Jesse Poynton, a voting member. My name is Robert Kane. I'm the chairman and also a voting member. Our solicitor tonight is Luke Clark. <clears throat> and our court reporter is the wonderful Arlene LaRosa. Also present is Kelly Kirk. And I don't remember the title I gave you last time, Kel, so we'll just say zoning officer. <laughs> Although I call you director of zoning, but just saying. Uh, we have two new cases. The first case are actually, <clears throat> who's got the flag? Kelly, you're not at the township building tonight. So there is a township building there and a flag in the upper left, so. Yeah. I don't have that on the screen. So Bill Rhodes, you're our uh, Pledge of Allegiance expert. Yep. So All right, well, uh, if you don't mind, please uh, stand if you can and repeat after me, looking, I guess, at the flag in the one picture on our screen. I pledge allegiance mm -hmm. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Our, our first case tonight is Z21-10, Jafar and Kathleen Salavidabar. I hope I didn't butcher that very much. Okay. Owners of 1626 Hampton Road, Havertown, PA, DC folio number 2207-0058200, who seek a variance from the provisions of section 182-206-C5 to encroach into the 30-foot required front yard setback by two feet to construct a five-foot by 11-foot extension to an existing enclosed front porch. Property is owned R4 and located in the seventh ward. So, Mr. and Mrs. I'm, I'm going with Jafar. You can call me Jeff. Jeff? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you, Jeff. Sure. And where are you on my screen here? I don't know if my video shows or not my camera because I only see my name. Right. We don't, we, we can't see you, Jeff. Is, is Kathleen also with you? Yes. yes. Kathleen is yes. here too. I'm here. Okay. Uh, are you having a technical difficulty or do you have the video off for some reason? I'm trying to see. Oh, here it is. Start my video. Oh, it's like it's failed to start the camera. Which one? Other two. I thought you said this one worked. And Luke, while we wait for that, do you have the uh, exhibits? Yes, we do have the exhibits. Yes. Yes, yes, we do. We did. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't know why the video doesn't show up. Um, I hope you're okay with that, but we can talk about it. Well, I'm I'm trying. We're trying to see. It's okay. Take your time. It's a new age. A new age. And, and Bob, I have 22 pages of um, encompassing the appeal, uh, the public acknowledgement that everybody signs their application uh, for the original um, uh, variance, their proposal that they put together, their impervious uh, service coverage that they drafted, and then some proposals, insurance certificates, the deed, and agreement of sale and plans. Hang on one second. <laughs> so, sorry, so, that was my paralegal. Um, <laughs> we, the, uh, so, uh, so that's, so that, that's what I have so far. Um, 22 pages uh, so, in total. That sounds like the entire uh, it's the packet application. Yeah, and in terms of the, are, so are obviously, 
Yes. Okay. So while while Jeff and Kathy try to work out their uh, is that okay if we turn it off and leave and then come back? Maybe show okay, show sure. it. We got it. We have uh, I guess Kathleen's on. Yes. Oh. Oh, okay. So she's in the other computer. Okay, let me see. Kathleen. <laughs> we got on another computer. <laughs> oh, wait. If they hear me, let me see. Are you able to hear me and see me? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Thank so, you. Uh, Jeff, are, are both you and Kathleen going to speak during this hearing? Yes, I might speak more and then she will also speak whenever necessary. Okay, I need to swear you each in then. So if, uh, I'll swear you first because you're on camera. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? Yes, I do. And your, your full name and address for the record, please. My full name is Jafar Jeff Salavitabar, and 1626 Hampton Road, Havertown, PA, 19083. Thank you. And now, Kathy, can, can Kathy hear us? Yes. It's uh, Kathy. Do you, please, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? And then he, do it again, Bob, because you had the earphones on. Kathy, can you hear me? Hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. It's Kathy so, Alavita Bar. Address is 626 yes. Hampton Road, Havertown, PA, 19083. Okay. So you. You have several exhibits, um, and Luke. What I what I was getting at. Do we still have Luke? Yeah. What I was yeah. getting at. Do, do we have pre-marked exhibit list? I, I don't have that. I just have the the packet. I I did send that to you with your Zoom link earlier today. Um, okay. But if you didn't get it, I can I can bring it up on my screen if that makes it easier for everybody. Okay. That's probably the easiest. Yeah. If yes. you can. Okay, I'm sorry. Did you say that I should do? Some, I should start talking. No, no, we're we're just stand by for one moment, Jeff. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I've got it here, Kelly. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Sorry, I was muted. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I see the exhibits in terms of my review of them. Um, yeah, so it's basically the packet that's laid out. Um, yeah. We have the, the application, the acknowledgement, um, which they filled out, the deed. Uh, the proposal, the narrative of the proposed work. We've got the building permit application, um, the plot plan, their impervious surface uh, coverage calculations, and then the plans that have been drafted um, by their engineer. Uh, all, none of those are um, none of those are out of the ordinary or anything that should not be admitted. So, no no issue with any of those, Bob. So A1 through A10 are admitted. So Jeff, yes. when, as you and Kathy refer to an exhibit, you see the list on the screen before you and you, you must have created this list, I presume. So <laughs> as you refer to the individual's exhibits, if you could refer to them by the exhibit number, that would be very helpful. Sure. So with that said, the exhibits are admitted. Please tell us a little bit about what you would like to do and why. 
what we like to do is we just want to have a little area of the porch right now. We, uh, and then we have some space. We want to just fill that space and continue it to the edge of the building. So we have like five foot the length and 11 foot would be the width. Uh, now, the only thing is we had 30 feet uh, setback, but our setback for the rest of building right now is 28 feet. And we are going to be in the same level as the rest of building. So this means it will be two feet that will be encroaching into that setback. So that's why we wanted to ask for a variance on that uh, to be able to do that because we are going to have it very uniform for the, all of the extension porch with the rest of it to be uniform on the front or on the side. And we will not exceed even an inch from that. That's what we want to do. Now, the cause, uh, one of the major cause also that we want to do this is because right now, currently in our house, in the first floor, we don't have any closet space in the living room, dining room, or kitchen. And uh, that is really difficult, especially winter time, that when we have our kids, we just had a grandchild and we have some relative to come and uh, we don't have any spot to have our coats or anything. So we wanted also to have that closet inside there uh, and it will help us tremendously. And I have also, I'm 65 right now, I have arthritis and it's hard for me to go frequently up the stairs, down the stairs. So that's why we wanted to have that closet. Uh, but as I said, we are not going to go beyond boundaries of the building. Uh, I suppose we'll, we'll go to board questions. I, I'm sure all of my questions will be asked by my comrades here, but Jesse, you want to go first on this one? Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think the plans are very clear and you've just explained that I was, one of my questions was going to be the purpose of the addition. So you've explained that um, besides the closet, what else would you see this space being used for? Just a kind of a, just an addition what, what is the porch used for now or the, i'm sorry the the currently enclosed part of the porch the what do you use that for is now very very narrow it's not that wide at all hmm. and we really can't put anything and as i said during winter time especially and other times when my children my daughter-in-law son-in-law come they don't have any room to put our stuff we have it all over the dining room mostly and uh, as i said it would be also a lot easier for me because me and my wife we came to this house we bought this house uh, as a permanent house for us we love this area we want to be here for the rest of our life as we get older we wanted to be here and we can live in the first floor with everything in first floor and that was uh, when I was buying the house actually I asked the person who was selling and I said do you think there is any problem if I just continue this porch to the end uh, and he said no I don't think there would be any problem with township or anything so i thought that it wouldn't be any problem but i didn't know anything about the setback and stuff uh, but i would really really appreciate it. it helps us tremendously we saved up a lot of money for ourselves for our retirement and this is part of our retirement investment okay very good um that was going to be one of my other questions was the the existing uh, part of the building that's um, enclosed that you're adding onto was already there when you purchased the house Yes. Okay. Um, and then I, I saw further on in your application, you're, you're doing some work in the back that we're not really talking about, but you're reducing the size of an existing patio. Is that yes. correct? What I have to tell you about that, uh, that part actually, there wasn't any problem with the zoning because I'm reducing actually that by 100 
100 feet, 100 square foot. And what happened is right now, this patio I have in the back, it has a lot of holes on it and it's concrete. It's a concrete and it has several holes on it and it's really dangerous. And when also rains very hard, all the water goes down. It's just really bad. And I talked to contractor. They said the best thing is to put this patio high, uh, higher level and we are going to replace it only with paver. So this way we give ourselves flexibility. If something goes wrong, we can take it out quickly and fix it. So that is really a, a hazard things for me. It's like a liability also that I like to do. Great. So it seems like you're you're reducing that patio by around 100 square feet, around a little that, under, yes. and then you're and you're adding yes. back only about 55. So you're actually reducing the overall impervious surface coverage right. of the entire exactly. property. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I have no other questions at this time. Thank you. All right. So Jeff, real quick, in order to obtain a variance, you need a hardship. So you said an awful lot. I want this. I want this. I would like this. But one thing that stuck in my mind is you, you said that you got arthritis. And uh, how, how does yes, that? Yes, I have knee arthritis. You? Yeah, how does that impact you in in terms of needing this closet? Uh, because this, I wait, 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 Jeff. Let me finish my question. Will Will this reduce the number of times you need to walk the steps in some way? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Exactly. Jessica. Uh, the only question I have that Jesse didn't ask was the exterior material of the addition. Is that going to match what you have yes. now? Yes, it will be 100% match. It will be all, anywhere is brick, it will be continuously brick. And anywhere is siding, it will be continuous siding. Okay. And then I noticed around the side. I also have a picture of it. One of the design, I believe, is A9, exhibit A9, that has the picture of it, how it looks like. Kelly, can you put up A9 so we know what we're talking about? Yeah. Yes, I'm just a little slow. It's the next one. Ah, one more. Not the, yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. So is the side of your house all brick? Is this brick? Yes, this is all brick, so it's going to be all brick to be exactly the same. Okay. And the front, wherever is brick, it will be continuously brick. That's important for me. I don't want to lose that uniformity. Okay, I have no further questions. Okay, Ed? Yes, um, make sure I'm not on mute. But the other thing was uh, this addition is going to have jut out the, the opposite way of your existing porch. So you're going to have, I assume, gutters on both sides. I'm just wondering how the stormwater could affect your, affect your neighboring properties. It's not going to affect it because there is uh, some grading and we make sure we have a proper grading uh, outside in each side also. And uh, the only way is it would be with my neighbor to the right of us. And that is not going to be issue because there is a slope between uh, the area. So it won't be any issue on that. So your neighbor, um, looking at the in front of your house, the neighbor to the left has a slope that comes down towards you. Oh, looking that is would be left, yes. Okay, gotcha. And uh, the currently the porch, where are the gutters on the current porch? The gutter? The downspout, I'm sorry. Downspout. Is that on the left corner? And it will be the same area. It won't be changing. It's the same. Okay. That's all the questions I had. Yeah, it will be the same. Okay. Bill? Um, so I just want to make sure. So uh, are you, is there, other than extending uh, this 
this will be a one story addition to the side of your existing porch. Are you replacing the existing porch and the existing porch roof? The roof will be uniform. It will be all uniform. The shingles will be all new, mm -hmm. all the ways to look the same, exact same. Okay. And um, on that page we were looking at it, it looks like um, there's just a little piece of brick above the um, angled roof on one side, but not on the other. Is that because to the other side of the, that little roof line, it's siding? Yes. Yes, they're okay. siding. Okay. And but I make sure definitely everything will be uniform. That's my goal also. Okay, and you see the picture I'm looking at um, in the top of the center there, up just above the angled new roof, on one on the right side of the angled new roof. Are you talking is, about this, Bill? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's yeah, shingles. There you go. That's just roof shingles. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's how it's typically yes. drawn. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thanks. All right. Um, no, I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Uh, I, I actually would like to, if you don't mind, um, it, the, the addition is not going out any further than the existing front wall. Yes, that's my promise. Okay. So you're simply squaring off the house. Yes, yes. Uh, that currently encroaches by two. Yes, that's our promise. Yes. And um, Mr. Salavita Bar, that, that, that's both to the side and to the front. So the front of this addition will be no further out than the current extension of the roof line over your porch. Yes, they will be all the same. Absolutely the same because I don't like it if it goes out, it won't be look good. I want to be everything the same. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, any, any other questions? I'll go round table again, Jesse. Yeah, thanks, I'm good. Jessica? No more questions. Ed? No questions. All right. Uh, I have a question for Luke. So, Cal, would you uh, give Jeff the chop and put everybody in the waiting room, uh, except for board and, and Luke? Please. Jeff, Jeff, give you the high five, the virtual high five yet? All right. <laughs> I see you guys, but I don't know if you see me. We do. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we see you. So, okay. Now, uh, I'll, I mean, all the questions have been asked by the board. All the uh, exhibits have been presented by the applicant. So now I'll ask if there's anyone present on the Zoom call that received certified mail that wishes to testify in this case. Anyone that received regular mail, any other residents of Howard Township, with that, we'll close the record on this case and the decision will be rendered either this evening or at our next regularly scheduled meeting, which is on, somebody help me. I think it's the 26th, second, no, 29th. <laughs> 29th? Yeah. So if we're not able to do a decision tonight, which we will, most likely, then a decision would be rendered our, at our next regularly scheduled meeting on April 29th. And Jeff and Kathy, thank you very much. And thank you're, you. you're welcome to hang around and listen to the next case or you can just give Kelly a call tomorrow and find out what the result is. Not tomorrow, we are closed, um, oh. but you can either watch the, you can hang out, you can watch the broadcast on Comcast channel five, Verizon channel, somebody help me out, I don't have Verizon. Um, or, on either of the government access channels, or you can call us on Monday and we'll- Can we watch it on YouTube also? Because- uh, tomorrow. tomorrow, yeah. Or actually, well, no, probably not tomorrow because IT department is also off. So uh, Monday. Now for how long do you have to hang out if you want to hang out? We don't know. Uh, Until, however, uh, thanks yeah. for the next case, so. Okay. Okay. If you don't mind, we'll hang, I'll hang out if it's okay. Okay, it sure is okay, but please put yourself on mute and- Okay, all right. sure. Cool. And you can turn your video off if you want again. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. All right, our next case is Z21-11, 1315 Lawrence Road Holdings LP, owner of 1315 Lawrence Road, 
Harbortown, PA, DC folio number 2201-0072700, seeks a variance from the provisions of section 182-727B and C1 and 2. Specifically, a variance is requested to allow a fence location in the front yard, its height, and to the extent the existing retaining wall exceeds 30 inches in the front yard, property is zoned LIN and located in the fourth ward. How you doing, Dennis? Doing well, thank you. Hi, Mike. Hi, Bob. Uh, so, who's going to be the primary presenter tonight? Is uh, Peter Mardinley, Mike's cousin. I'm an attorney, and uh, Dennis and Mike asked me to help. So, okay. And I want to so, go ahead. Do you want to enter your appearance on the record then, Peter? Please. Attorney ID number, et cetera. Go ahead. 25354. All right. So, Pete Mardinley. We got Mike. We got Dennis. Okay. Uh, you, you, the exhibits are pre-marked, of course, and as you saw with these Zoom hearings, we have our solicitor uh, identifying exhibits, and then, you know, in your case, you would move for the admission, but uh, so with that, why don't you identify the records, the exhibits before we begin, Pete? Um, uh, Kelly, do you, sure. do you want to share the screen? There's an exhibit list everyone sure. should have. Sure can. can. Identify them that way. What do you want me to do that? Uh, I mean, if you if you want to do it, that's fine. Um, the other applicant was having a bit of technical difficulties, but I can do it too if if, if you prefer. Uh, either way, whatever works for you. Um, I I can do it. It's fine. Great, thank you. While Kelly's doing that, I just wanted to express my appreciation. She's been wonderful to work with. She's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bear with me. I have a I question have before them. you start. Yeah. I see a Michael on the screen. Who is that? That's Mike Mardinley. He's the applicant or representing the, the applicant, but that, that'll be drawn out. Well, Mike Martin, I just know who, who speaks. So Mike Mardinley. Yeah. But, and Dennis O'Neill. And we have and, Peter Mardinley, right? right. Yes. Yeah, Peter's so the attorney. Cousin. The attorney. Okay. My, Michael is the representative of the applicant. I, I just got to get players in on the record, whoever speaks. So that's cool. We'll get you. Give me the wave, Arlene. But remember, it's uh, going to be broadcast. So not that way. I know. I, that's why I'm trying to get it together. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> okay. Kelsey, you're having a, a tough time displaying the exhibit. Well, I, I didn't uh, I didn't make it a package like I did the other one because I okay. I Peter and I had talked and I thought that he was going to be doing it so oh, okay. bear with me. Go ahead, Peter. Why don't Why don't you just do it then? Yeah. Right. Why don't I do that? Let me just find the right. Can Can you see the exhibit list now? Yes. Okay. So in the in the package there are there are seven documents. There's a signed. Zoning hearing board application uh, without exhibits. It's plain and simple. There's the fee simple deed, the Haverford zoning ordinance uh, that you have. I put in the notice of hearing that I received at my office. It's my understanding it was advertised, but that uh, Kelly has not quite yet received the formal proof, and we can put supplement the record with that. I have the CV for Dennis O'Neill. We have the plan that was submitted. Um, to the Shade Tree um, Commission and the Planning Commission on March 22nd and March 25, updated, however, for the changes that the Shade Tree Commission uh, requested when they did that on March 22nd. And then we have the planning agenda to show you that this was on the agenda for the Planning Commission on March 25. Uh, if, uh, if there's no objection, I would ask that these come into evidence. Well, hey, Luke. Uh, yes. The, should we proceed these each with an A? I, I don't know if there's going to be protestant exhibits or any other resident exhibits. It doesn't look like anyone's on the Zoom meeting, but should, should we make these A1 through A7 or just leave them one through seven? What do you think? I, 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 either one, Bob. Uh, one through seven, I think is fine. If you want to make it A1 through A7, that's fine. Uh, they all should come in. There's no issue 
Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll just leave them as one through seven, uh, and they're admitted. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, I, I have them ready if if you want if anybody wants to see them. But I think the the easiest thing to do is just by may by way of introduction. After this was submitted, I found out that uh, there used to be, in fact, a six foot chain link fence that stretched along uh, Lawrence Road that was actually removed as part of the, the remediation. And for the board, the background of why we're here in part is that um, the addition to the Haverford Mr. Storage location that was put in, uh, this was kind of the, the tail end at the time, the applicant was not quite sure of what was going to happen with this building, which is the old Continental Auto Parts building that has um, kind of uh, resurfaced, uh, I, I'll say a little bit like the ugly uh, duckling, it's, it's looking quite good now. Um, so to, to do this though, because of the oddball location in the industrial park, this is technically the uh, front yard although it's some 13 to 15 feet higher than the grade. And, and you can kind of see that. But I think the easiest thing to do is to just ask if we can uh, put uh, Dennis on the stand and, and take his testimony and kind of review the plan with you as to what's being proposed and the genesis for this. And I would just simply say in terms of hardship, um, this building doesn't really have any other front yard and if you look at the topography, and you, this is kind of spelled out, I think everybody knows that we've got the, the uh, Rocky Run, or not the, the YMCA around the corner, um, and we've got a school the other direction and a neighborhood where there's a fair amount of population and people walk along this to get to the, um, the, the, the mercantile development on the corner. So this is really to, create a, a, a safety to address a safety condition if you didn't if you only had a 30 inch fence that would not be a very good thing there in terms of what the fence is going to look like uh, let's see um, I can kind of show you that if, if, can you see that or do I need to blow it up a little bit more it, it's a nice it. it's a nice looking fence as you can see this is on um, the exhibit list, and this is in, in evidence. And so it's going to be seven, 70 inches high there. It'll be essentially six feet um, when it's mounted. <clears throat> and that'll run from essentially here along the, the, uh, the sidewalk where, this, where the uh, little buttonholes are and it'll be covered by the trees that are there. And then it goes down the hill uh, to a gate. Uh, you can see that there's a, a drop uh, that goes from the top of the roadway 323. This is a, a grade that drops uh, to 313. Uh, and then below that at the, at the base there, it's another, it's 305. So you've got another eight foot drop there in, in terms of the wall. And then the orange is the is the block building, but um, I just wanted to kind of introduce so that you have a good concept of what's being requested, and it's to be able to put this fence up to make the site safe. So, Dennis, do you want to uh, explain this a little bit further in terms of this and the background? So, Peter, uh, yes, are are you going to call Dennis as an expert or a fact witness? I was going to call him as an expert uh, and a fact witness. Uh, he, his, do you, do you he, want to, why don't you have Wadir and uh, Luke will have a few questions and then we'll move on to his testimony then. Okay. And, and uh, we, we know Dennis, so you might just ask him if he's appeared as an expert in front of the board before and, and if there's any changes to his licensure or whatever. You don't have to do a long Wadir, but go ahead. Thank you. Um, do you want him Oh, sorry. Swear. <laughs> and please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, something God? I do. Okay. Thanks, Arlene. Go ahead, Peter. Dennis, I, I have on the screen applicant exhibit five, which is a curriculum vitae that you provided to me 
I'm just going to scroll, scroll through it. Uh, you're currently a licensed professional engineer in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Is that correct? Yes, I am. And is this a, a true and correct copy of the curriculum vitae that you provided? Yes, it is. And have you testified as an expert before the Zoning Hearing Board of Haverford Township in the past? Yes, I have. I would move to qualify Dennis O'Neill as, as an expert witness. Right. Luke? Yeah, to, just two questions. Uh, just to confirm, um, with regard to your licensure, you're still in good standing with the Commonwealth. Is that correct? Yes, I am. Uh, all right. And, and you have not been subject to any disciplinary uh, proceedings or any type of censure? I have not. All right. That's all I have, Bob. Okay. Thank you. Uh, unless there's an objection from any of the board members, we'll admit Dennis as an expert engineer. Any objection? Dennis, you're admitted as Thank an you. expert. Once again. Can you zoom out a little bit, Peter? So yep. I can see the whole. What do you want to see footage? here? Is this good? Yeah, I just want to see the, I want to show them the whole frontage. That's good, thank you. So um, you're looking at the property fronting the north side of Lawrence Road. Uh, the the um, Swiss Farms and the uh, the other restaurant is to your right on the screen, the new um, addition for the um, Haverford Mr. Storage would be to the top side of the screen that you see. The school that um, was referred to is, would be to your left and the YMCA would be down Lawrence Road to your right to give you a little um, bit of uh, area of where you're at. We're proposing approximately 250 feet of fence along Lawrence Road. It's, as was shown in the picture, aluminum. Um, I call it rod, wrought iron, but it's, it's aluminum uh, fence. It will be mounted a couple inches off the ground so that it will have a total height of six feet. Uh, it is approximately 10 to 12 feet behind to the north of the sidewalk that's along Lawrence Road. Um, and then it turns, as um, Mr. Mardinley said, uh, north towards the, uh, the building and down the driveway, there's a gate there. There was a fire hydrant installed um, on that property as part of the Mr. Storage development. So this gate will be for emergency access for the fire department. It'll have a lockbox um, key to the, to the other lockboxes for the, um, the industrial park. Um, as was previously mentioned, the, the fence will be primarily at the top of a, of a steep slope. It's, uh, it's greater than 25%. It, it falls down to top of a um, six to eight foot high wall uh, that forms the driveway behind the building. This building um, actually faces towards the industrial park, which is away from Lawrence Park. This is to from or Lawrence Road. So from Lawrence Road, you're looking uh, at the back of the building. And as was also mentioned, we, we are doing this for um, safety purposes. We wanna make sure that uh, no one can, can get to that slope and tumble down and go over the top of the wall. The, the plantings that you see are part of an agreement that was made uh, during the Mr. Storage um, land development because a piece of this ground was subdivided we had had to do a landscape strip along Lawrence Road um, so we've been to the tree commission they've um, approved our our tree species um, and they've approved our location of the trees we're putting in uh, some small low growing deciduous trees um, along the street we have a row of Norway spruce trees uh, back along the fence, a couple of them behind the fence, uh, where we can get some flat area for the slopes uh, to act as a natural buffer. And then the fence is, a, is the safety buffer uh, that we're trying to uh, seek relief for in this, uh, in this plan. And it, it's a very straightforward issue with the, with the safety here of, of keeping those, um, we have a lot of kids that pass by this way, the school's about 500 feet away. There's a, uh, a young 
neighborhood um, or, or neighborhood of young families uh, about 250 feet away to the to the left and then of course um, the kids after school travel down to the YMCA at Eagle Road and uh, Lawrence Road. That's all I really have to uh, present on the plan but I can answer any questions that the um, the board may have. Okay. Bill Rhodes. Hey, Dennis. Um, thanks. Uh, I just want to make sure um, on this exhibit that you showed, which I believe is A6, um, which the, the plan, <clears throat> at least my copy, <clears throat> and I think it's the one that's up, is, is dated, <clears throat> excuse me, August 28, 2020. And um, uh, I, it, it would appear, so this, this landscaping plan was prepared uh, as part of your uh, SALDO process through Planning Commission? The, yeah, the original, the original planning plan was done to satisfy some SALDO requirements as they started to close out okay. the Mr. Storage. Uh, this plan that you see, A6, is actually was actually revised. Um, uh, I'm not sure of the date. I'm I think I'm hiding. Dennis, so, I, I put it up. Uh, you can see three twenty three twenty one, and that was the only change in this plan from the one that you have is the species of trees changed based on the request of the of the tree commission. Okay, thank you. And so if you yeah you could bring it back into the center. I just wanted to. Um, identify. It looks like <clears throat> there is a uh, a narrow green uh, lawn, I guess, grass um, strip between the curb and the sidewalk. Is that right? Yes, there is. And and about how wide is that? That's about two and a half to three feet. Okay. And then I just want to make sure so that some of these trees will be planted in front of the fence and some of them behind the fence. Is that right? Yeah, we want to keep the fence back as far as we can from the sidewalk uh, to keep it as, as um, least intrus intrusive as possible. So mm -hmm. um, where, we're, where we're at the very top of the steep slope, the trees would be in front of it, which is to the left of the, of the uh, picture. And then the tree commission asked us to keep a nice um, row of trees along the street, which would be considered the street trees for the development. And then the Norway spruce that you see are behind the fence, which act to fill in the gaps of the buffer. Okay, I see. Thank you. So um, you, so the distinction between planting in front and behind is a species um, distinction. Yeah, they're, they're the evergreen trees and they'll tend to grow a little taller. So they're further away okay. from the, the utilities. And um, even though uh, looking at this depiction on A6, it appears that um, there is a steeper slope to the left and there's a flatter portion to the right. The idea is to keep the fence um, in a direct parallel with the sidewalk and not, and not sort of create a, a wider green area to the right. That's correct. Okay. Um, and then... Um, <clears throat> Between the retaining wall and the sidewalk, uh, where it's not planted by a tree, um, will that be lawn or what? what uh, is the ground cover? That will be lawn. Lawn, okay. And um, the applicant will maintain that lawn um, and be responsible for mowing that lawn there and, and the strip between the curb and the sidewalk? The strip between the curb and the sidewalk, yes, that'll be regularly mowed. The area around the tre trees will be regularly mowed. The area on the steep slope will most likely be a fescue grass, which would be maintained monthly or, or bi-monthly rather than mowed weekly by like a, like a lawn. Okay. And then it, it appears, I think, that over time or historically, there may have been some curb cuts on Lawrence Road that I don't think are used. Will those curb cuts be eliminated as part of this plan? I don't see any depicted on your on your A6, so I figured 
you're, you'll eliminate those? Uh, not as part of this plan. Um, there, there is um, some future development in the, in the park coming at some point in time um, where that may or may not um, be affected. But the curb cut at the, at the driveway we're keeping. Keep well, I see access. the curb cut at the driveway that you are installing the gate, but I believe that further to the left of that, there is there may be an existing yeah. curb cut, maybe. And I, I just wanted to. The... Yeah, I, it, it's probably somewhere around there, but um, uh, I wanted it's to the right of uh, the telephone pole. Um, you have a pole with light number 2324. Um, I believe there is a curb cut there, but uh, are you, yeah, somewhere around there exactly. Are you going to redo the sidewalks and the curbing uh, as part of this landscape plan? It was not our intention. Only repair the parts that are, that are failing. Okay, because I do believe that the sidewalk is that whole length needs to be replaced. It's all broken, it would appear, um, and presents its own kind of safety hazard. What's the applicant's plan on the sidewalk? It ha well, it would have to be brought to code um, as part of the original subdivision land development. So I'm sure that the township engineer would inspect it and, and advise the applicant what sections or, or in, in its entirety would need to be replaced. Okay, that's, it would seem to me, it would, uh, and that's fine. It, it would seem to me that, that the curb cut that exists between the two, those two flagpoles um, uh, should, uh, should be closed up so that you'd have a consistent, and, and is depicted on yours as being a consistent grass strip across um, the entire length uh, between the curb and the street, or in the, the curb and the sidewalk. So, uh, I would, you know, will, will the applicant eliminate that, that uh, curb cut to nowhere? Not at right. this time. There's a garage door on the second floor. Wait, Did you I see didn't, it in the building? Wait, wait a minute, wait, wait. All right, don't you're, talk. You're not, you're not sworn. Sorry. So. <clears throat> I'll, I'll <laughs> defer, <laughs> Mr. Rhodes, I'll defer that to the applicant. Okay, so Pete, okay. If, if you're gonna have Mike testify, I, I need to swear him. Right. So, Mike, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of you, God? I do. And your full name and address and the capacity in which you appeared tonight? Michael Mar Dinley, 1111 Alexander Avenue, Drexel Hill, PA, 19026. I am the manager of the property, 1315 Large Road LP. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mardinley. Thanks. Um, so what would be the reason to keep that um, existing curb cut that doesn't, I don't think is currently used? It was used in the past for National Wood to have, it had, actually had a car bridge there that was deteriorating when I took it down when I did the demolition. And my hope in the future is to connect that to the curb cut for deliveries for the second floor offices. It's not in our plans yet, but I don't want to extinguish the curb cut uh, until I've made a decision on the next set of plans. I'm, I might be able to help out a little bit and point, point something out that may not be obvious on the plan, uh, if, if you would allow me. Mm -hmm. uh, thank sure. you so much. Um, let me zoom in a little bit on this. Um, there is actually, on the second floor, if you go look at the building from the Lawrence Road side, there's a garage door to nowhere on the second floor where that, and that is depicted here. See the set door second floor, door second floor? Mm -hmm. Between those two marks is a garage door that goes up that is essentially a truck receiving door. And this is the location at which uh, the curb cut was located in general, although it's, as I, as, as you point out, it's not clearly articulated on the plan. Um, 
there was a hope, as, as uh, Michael has said, to be able to get uh, supplies into the second floor in that fashion. So that's, that was the background. And Michael, um, currently, well, th this is still a, a parcel that's, that's still being finished at this point. The construction is, is basically done, but it's, it's not complete, uh, fitted out inside. Is that correct? Um, our fit out's close. The roof still has to go on, but to satisfy deliveries to the second floor, it left the garage door in that was existing in the building um, probably for about 50 years, and I didn't extinguish the curb cut because I intend, I intended to five years ago to complete it. It's not in the budget right now, um, but I don't want to exclude it from my future plans, if that makes sense. I, I understand it, but uh, at the same time, uh, the way that I'm looking at this, you know, uh, if the plan is to come back to us after you get the an approval and then to pierce this new fence, um, put a new uh, a vehicular access into the building, uh, you know, I would have wanted to factor it into my decision tonight. Um, let me ask some questions about the building. Uh, how's the second floor accessed in that building currently or any upper floor? Okay, the second floor is accessed through the first floor two ways. Um, the garage doors, which you can see are the X's, the dock flooring, yeah. they're all level. So there's three man doors there to enter the second floor on a set of stairs on the back side of the building. There also is a set of stairs on the front side of the building where it says door second floor and door second floor. One of those are, one of those is already blocked up and the second one is receiving a platform and stairs that's already been approved by zoning. Um, so there's two accesses to the second floor. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, and so uh, is there an elevator inside the building or do you plan no, to put one? No, no elevator needed. And um, so presumably if you were to be looking, you'd be, I mean, and is, is there some reason that an elevator could not be the solution to your second floor access rather than putting a road, another road from Lawrence Road into the building at the second floor? The elevators, it's only a 20 foot, 25 foot tall building to the roof. Um, it's overkill for the building and it's more for packages to be delivered, not to drive trucks on it. It could be a pedestrian walkway into the building from there. The parking is in the front in the stone area and on the paved area in the front. Um, so I want my tenants to be able to access both ways, but if UPS comes or FedEx, I want them to have an access where they can get in. I didn't think I had to extinguish the curb cut at this point. Um, Although it's not depicted on your drawing though. It's not depicted because if, we weren't you, even considering it right now. Excuse me guys, if you, if you zoom in, you see a 323 contour right along the curb line. Uh, if you have to zoom in right there, you can see the one side of the curb cut. There's a line, a vertical line. That's one edge of the curb cut. Right and there. I think, I think the other edge may be underneath the tree symbol. Yeah. To the, so you're plan you're planting trees in the, in a right of way that you would later need to remove, um, and then pierce this new fence, and to provide for vehicular access to the second floor of a building. Uh, presumably over a bridge or elevated causeway, rather than just put an elevator in on the uh, that gives uh, access to the second floor from the ground floor. You're sort of boxing me in a corner here because I haven't made a decision yet on the building because 
The second floor primarily is offices, okay, for contractors. The first floor is for contractors, trucks, and storage. Um, I don't need vehicular traffic over the bridge, but we need to deliver sometimes over there. It hasn't been fully, mm -hmm. I'm still recovering from the $200,000 I had to put out for the fire hydrant for the plan. So I really don't have the funds to put an elevator in right now until I get occupied and get down the road a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so the let, let me I can modify at a later point to put a gate in um, with access if that was the choice. Mm -hmm. um, it, could I just clarify something? Oh, am I muted? I am. No, I'm not. Uh, if I could clarify something just very quickly, um, the the permits uh, that you received for the renovations were not reviewed by zoning. They were reviewed by code enforcement. So there were not zoning approvals for the renovations of the building. Okay. Um, I also want to, so if this were, even this, if this were uh, on foot delivery, um, where would the delivery trucks park to allow a delivery guy to walk in on that um, on that space or along that way to, to access the second floor? On Lawrence Road. Is there a parking allowed on that stretch of Lawrence Road? No. But they pull in like everybody else does, like Amazon. They put their four-way flashers on, they go and deliver, and they're out. Um, yeah, but we don't encourage that kind of behavior in zoning approvals, right? So we don't want to create the dynamic where something, someone will be more induced to break the rules um, mm -hmm. than to obey the rules. Not trying to break any rules. Um, I know, I know you're not. I'm, I'm saying that for a delivery person who they thought that was their the best way in, they probably would do exactly what you said. They'd pull up. They they park illegally in front of a school and then walk across and leave their cars, forcing other cars to drive around them on a single lane traffic with a double yellow lot. So, um, okay, Let, let's. I'm going to close the curb up. I'm going to leave the garage door because it's already built into the building. Sure. I'll close the curb if you want me to, and we won't consider it again. Okay. Uh, I have no more questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ed McGargy. Yes, thank you. Um, I think we're on Dennis. <laughs> now, Dennis, the question I have is that were the trees put there before the fence was considered? No. Was... Uh, Ed, excuse me one second. Bill Rhodes, would you take the, the con for a moment? I, I need to step away. Oh, sure. Yeah. Two minutes, but just take All the right. con. Continue yeah. with the meeting. Yeah, Ed, you're up. Yes. Okay, go ahead, Dennis. No, the trees and the fence were always part of a of a uh, combined package. Okay, I'm just, I'm just looking at the trees, and like a pine tree is not going to grow through the fence. So I'm trying to figure out why they're so close to the fence, and some of them look like they're on the fence. Well, it, it, this the circles are the are the canopy of the tree. Yeah, but you're going to start and, off with a three foot tree or something, right? Six oh, feet. yeah, but those circles are, are probably 12, 14, 15 feet. So they're showing a more mature tree than a new tree. Right, but, the, but they're pine trees. So putting them up against the fence. Only seven of them are pine trees, and the pine trees are the ones to the north behind the fence. Well, I have one so you there. Got one, two, three, four, and then there's then they move to the front of the fence, and there, you know, I, I think the trunks are probably about three or four feet off the fence. Well, it can't be three or four feet off the front fence if the between the sidewalk and the fence is only two foot to begin with. So how can they be three feet? No, the, the space between the sidewalk and the curb is two foot. The space between the sidewalk and the fence is about 10 feet. There you go. I didn't hear that number before. Okay. So the second question I'm, I have is the issue of the access road that's shown with the gate. Yes. That's only an emergency access? 
That's an emergency access for the fire department. Um, and most likely it's an out gate, not an in gate. The, and the reason I say that is because there was an emergency access road put into the design of the Haverford Mr. Storage, which allows fire access from the, the EPA access road behind Mr. Storage into this site at that point. And then they would use that gate to go out towards Lawrence Road. In the event they wanted to use that fire hydrant for something that they were doing on Lawrence Road, they could go down that access road, open that gate and get to that hydrant. Okay. Uh, the other question I have related to that then is that have you looked at the issue of putting the fence up and those trees and then visibility from that access road and from the access road that serves uh, Mr. Storage and Swiss Farms and Caruno, the pizza place? Yes, we, we have our site distance triangle outside the limit of the tree. And then that space that's two and a half feet off the ground and five feet high, we believe that we have that access in both those driveways. Uh, Peter, if you could scroll over to the, towards the Swiss Farms. So the Swiss Farms driveway is off our property. So there's, there's about uh, 40 feet to the first tree, the first tree that's closest to the street. So your triangle's measured back um, about five and a half feet off the curb. And then you would take a triangle out to the oncoming lane, which would be the far lane in that case. And then the oncoming lane to the to the right side of the picture would be the near lane to the to the driveway. So you're you're not looking at you're looking at the lane furthest away from you for your triangle. And you go 75 feet in each direction. So that that gives you the clearance to look down towards the YMCA and towards the school. I Go show me that one because that that's not in that direction. The schools. So you're you're, it, let's say you're at the. Uh, if you're at the access driveway. Show me where two, you think that is. Where's that at? Oh, your access driveway. Okay. Our access driveway. You're mm -hmm. two feet off the curb, and the sidewalk's about three and a half feet wide. So you would you only start back where the driver would be sitting in the vehicle. So you're, you're starting about five and a half to six feet back from the, from the travel lane. And then you would, you would go 75 feet. So you're looking probably about where you see that 40 foot legal right of way arrow um, to, the, to the left of Howard Avenue. Keep going left, right. So you're looking at the you're looking at from from that driveway, you're looking at the middle of the far further lane away from you, because that's the traffic coming towards you. Gotcha. And you're you're past those trees. Okay. Right. Where he where he kind of drew that right there. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that 10 foot separation was what the, from the sidewalk to the fence is what I was concerned about, but I didn't know that it was 10 foot. Okay. No other questions? Okay. Um, thanks, Ed. Uh, let's see, uh, Jessica, I guess, I think you're up next. Sorry, I was on mute. I don't have any other questions. Okay, um, thanks, Jesse. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, so when the property was, I think, I believe sold sometime last year, did did codes come out and review the state of the, the sidewalk and curb? Was it reviewed at that time as, as is customary around the township? Uh, it was not, 
There's a note on the original subdivision land development plan, which indicates that any substandard curb and sidewalk as part of the subdivision land development will be brought up to code to the standards of the code. And, and you would accept as, as a um, condition of the approval that that, that would occur in this, uh, in, during this work? Because that's my biggest concern is, I mean, I heard a lot of talk about safety and I, I believe that, yeah, the sidewalk is, is the biggest issue I have with this, is bringing, bringing the sidewalk standard up. It, it, it is a condition the plan, that it, was, oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, only one at a time, please, Dennis. It, it is a condition of the approval of the subdivision and land development. So yes, they would, they would accept that condition. They accepted it when they signed the land development agreement. Okay, um, let's see. Will the, um, the access drive, will that be signed to say that it's for um, emergency use only? To, you know, to make sure that we don't have delivery trucks using, trying to access it off the barns? Currently is not signed that way, I'm sure it could be. Den Dennis, but can I interrupt? That is a common travel driveway to get out. The emergency starts down at a 25 foot setback that's the emergency driveway that goes, that was granted to Mr. Storage in his addition. This is my everyday, one of my everyday driveways um, to use. It also has fire access from that way. Um, it's, a, it's a commercial property. My tenants come in that way. It hasn't been used in five years um, because we're doing grading and we haven't finished the driveway. It's one of the last things we're gonna do but it will be usable like it was before um, to bring traffic um, and customers into the site. That, that, Michael, if I can ask, because I happen to know this because I've been by this property for over 40 years. This was the primary access to Continental Auto Parts. Yes, it was. So this is, there's no intention of abandoning this access and it's just that it's going to be gated and, and used. In other words, there, there's not, there's no desire to further landlock this property. The, the property of 1315 at this point has access to Lawrence Road and the back way past Mr. Storage through Hillcrest, but those are the only two means of access. Is that correct? Correct. So especially for fire and safety, you really want two, two means of access. The Planning mm -hmm. Commission has reviewed this and approved it. The commissioners have reviewed this and approved it. Um, one of the things we were going to get to, and I think I said in my opening remarks, most recently, this plan was reapproved by the Planning Commission on March 22nd, or excuse me, on March 25th. Um, and and I, I think that one of the things I can either ask Dennis or, or Kelly Kirk, it, it went before the Planning Commission and it was approved in this fashion. So we're here to see. But Peter, they're, they're an advisory board to the Board of Commissioners. Correct. Like we're an independent quasi judicial. So, and, you know. And, it, and this is going to go to the Board of Commissioners, as I understand it from Kelly thereafter. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to go back to my original question because I, I believe that we heard testimony earlier that it was emergency exit only. So, should we clarify that for the record that this will eventually be used for ingress and egress from the site, but it will have this, this gate? To limit to limit access to tenants only. Michael, the gate will be closed at night because Bob and Joe's towing, which occupies some of the ground back there, has the town's emergency towing, and my storage yards are back there. And part of my contract with Haverford Township is to keep the yard secured. So I have three accesses that have to be secured. So it'll be open in the morning and closed at night. Clear? Okay. Uh, yeah, understood. I just want to make sure that the, the testimony is clear for, for everybody for the record. Thank um, you. I do not have any other questions. Thanks. Okay. Bill, any other questions? Uh, no, thank you. Ed? Uh, no other questions. Okay. Peter, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I just wanted to clarify the testimony that, um, Michael, I think you told me 
literally yesterday that there, and, and I think Dennis did as well, that there was a chain link fence, a six foot high chain link fence along this entire strip. Uh, basically what is happening here is you're replacing the fence. Is that I'm replacing the fence that was there for probably 60 years prior to my buying the building. Um, but it was in such disrepair. I changed, there was a lot of outbuildings down here when we started, it was a pretty ugly situation. And we couldn't do our work with that deteriorating fence and knowing that I was gonna replace, replace it with a nicer fence later on. But it was six feet high because of, there was always a steep slope there. <clears throat> and can I just ask uh, Peter, or or uh, or Michael, the the location of the proposed new fence though is not on the same exact footprint of the old fence. Is that right? At this point, I have no idea. It was probably pretty close, <laughs> but I have it, no idea. Um, I did the dem demolition five years ago. Um, I assume it was. I can't. Okay, perhaps this will will help, Bill. Um, and and maybe Dennis, you can comment on this. If you continue to the, in this direction, I, I'm, I've lost my compass, Rose. Is that uh, south or, or west? West. Um, west. West. That's continue west. west. If yeah. you continue west down Lawrence Road to the adjacent property, isn't there an existing chain link fence there now? Yes. And, and is that about where the fence, your fence, proposed fence is? Yes, good point. Okay, and I, I think you, so I think the whole Peter, extent, go ahead. If you blow up the drawing, if you blow up around the just at the corner, you can see very lightly where the existing fence was. It's a light line, and you can see the darker fence is proposed. And they traverse eastward. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trees, about the seventh tree going east. The old fence starts to cross behind the, the new fence. And if you keep moving eastward, you can see we're almost on top of it. You can start to see the lighter squares versus the darker squares. Dennis, is that fence the... Um, temporary construction fence that was allowed to be put placed up or placed or the fence that was removed five years ago? That was the original fence that was moved five years ago. These topo plans were done uh, several years ago and that was the fence that was, was shown here. Thank you. And that it used to be very covered, it was covered with vines. You could hardly see the fence itself. So based on that, I'd like to amend this essentially to request that the zoning hearing board allow what is in essence the continuance of a non-conforming use. All right, your, your request for an amendment is noted. Uh, I, think, I think we should probably... Uh, put everyone in the waiting room now and have a discussion with Luke. Everyone agree? Yes. Yes. Would you, would you tell Jeff to take us off the record and put everyone in the waiting room? We're live. <laughs> oh, I have to let everybody a second, sorry. Oh, Luke, do we need to... to uh... Uh, uh, Bob, we okay. are live, by the way. All right. Okay. Outside of... Oopsie. Okay. We'll res resume the meeting of the Haberth Township Zoning Hearing Board. So, <clears throat> uh, Peter, your, your request to amend the application is duly noted. Um, Let's go round robin one more time if there are any questions from board members. Uh, Bill Rhodes. Um, no, I don't have any other. Ed McGarvey. Yes, Mr. Chair. 
Um, if we were to a, a grant the approval or a variance or the other thing that you asked for, um, how long would it take you to put in the fence? Um, it's on, we're changing the topsoil out now for the trees. And once that's done, we're probably going to be towards the end of May, June. So we're in that range. So would you be able to, would you agree? Uh, are you going to plant the trees and everything landscaping out there at the time you're doing the uh, fence? I'm probably going to do the trees first because of the steep slope at the very end towards Linwood School. It narrows down to about a foot. So to dig a hole is very difficult. Um, so I'm probably going to put the trees. I'm going to run my string line and see where the fence is and then add the trees. Okay. So we, like that. if there was a condition that said that within six months you had to have the fence and trees done, that wouldn't be a... Re that would be something you could accept? Oh, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Anything else, Ed? Uh, no, nothing else, Mr. Chairman. Jessica? Nothing. Jesse? Uh, nothing further, thank you. Okay, and all my questions have been asked. <clears throat> Peter, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, just in, in, in your thinking about this and your deliberating, um, we are here because the commissioners have asked, and we think it's appropriate to put a higher fence in. If you attach conditions that are unacceptable, or if you deny the variance, understand that the applicant's option is to simply say, I'll put in a 30 inch fence, which is kind of crazy. So I hope we can work cooperatively to figure out how to allow this to, to proceed. And I just, uh, I think that this is a pre-existing condition on a building that's been there since probably the 1920s or earlier. Uh, it's an unusual circumstance. It's not what this ordinance kind of uh, had in mind, it just, it, which is residential neighborhoods and front yards. This is a commercial area, an industrial area. It's zone light industrial. Um, so just keep that in mind in your deliberations. And I thank you for your patience and uh, cooperation. And Peter, in fairness, it's zone light industrial, but it's adjacent to residential properties. There's no real buffer between the, this property and residential properties on Lawrence Road, on the uh, west side where, where this property is, and also on the other side, the east side of the street. There are a couple offices, but there's residences all over the place and the school. No, we're, we, we appreciate that. And that's why we're here. We, we agree. We, we're not trying to fight this, but, but we want to make sure that we can get it done. All right. Any other questions? Any other comments? With that, I'll ask if there's anyone on this meeting that received certified mail that wishes to testify. Anyone that received regular mail. Any other residents of Howard Township. With that, we'll close the record on this case and the decision will be rendered either this evening or at our next regularly scheduled meeting on April 29th. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Appreciate Thank it. You're welcome. Take care, Thank guys. You, Stay safe. Thank all you, right. Kelly. So hey, good to see you. I, I don't. I don't want to drive Jeff crazy, Kel, but we need to go off the record again. We're live. Okay. All right, we'll resume the meeting of the Hanford Township Zoning here, Hearing Board of Thursday, April 1st. Um, our first decision is KZ21-10, <clears throat> Jafar and Kathleen Salavitabar, owners of 1626 Hampton Road, Hanford Town, PA. I won't read the rest of the description into the record unless someone specifically requests. Jessica, would you please take that decision? Sure. I would make a motion to approve the application with the following conditions. That the front and side of the addition will be no further into the front yard or side yard setback than the existing porch and house. That water runoff, it will not adversely affect neighboring properties and work will be completed within one year and in accordance with the notes of testimony. 
Okay, Jesse? I agree. Ed? I concur. Bill? I agree. And so do I, that application is approved with those conditions, 5-0. The next decision is KZ 21-11, 1315 Lawrence Road Holdings LP, owner of 1315 Lawrence Road, Havertown, PA, DC folio number 2201-0072700, who seeks a variance from the provisions of section 182727B and C1 and 2. Specifically, a variance is requested to allow a fence location in the front yard, its height, and to the extent the existing retaining wall exceeds 30 inches in the front yard. Property is owned light industrial and located in the fourth ward. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, a request to, to amend, and I'm, I'm, we're, we're just gonna do this, Bill. Let's have a brief discussion, Bill Rhodes and I, and, or Luke. Uh, a request was made to amend the application uh, for a determination that the fence would be a continuation of a previously existing nonconformity. Um, I, I would move that we deny that this fence is a continuation of an existing nonconformity. Uh, but Bill Rhodes, I'm going to ask you to take the decision, and you know I'll I'll ask you to include that in, in whatever determination you make. But go ahead, Bill. Okay. Uh, with respect to application Z21-11, I would vote to grant the request of variance, subject to the following conditions: the applicant will eliminate the existing curb cut on Lawrence Road. Um, that is uh, that uh, has previously been used to directly access the second story of the building of the or at least the existing building. The applicant will replace the existing curb and sidewalks along Lawrence Road in accordance with applicable codes and land development plans and requirements. The applicant's landscaping will be completed in accordance with the Shade Tree Commission approval and applicable provisions of the subdivision and land development ordinance as um, approved by the Board of Commissioners. Um, the proposed fencing shall be uh, an estate fence that is no taller than six feet above the ground and shall be uh, as depicted in the inset photo on exhibit A6. The planning of trees and shrubs on the eastern end of Lawrence Road shall not block the required viewing angles for vehicles when entering or exiting the property from Lawrence Road. And all work shall be completed within six months of the date of this approval in accordance with the notes of testimony. And Bill, I would ask you to uh, add it, a determination that to deny yeah. the uh, request right. For a determination that this is a good continuation of a nonconformity, right? And and and, but I would I would, in addition to uh, approving the requested variance originally, I would deny the uh, supplemental variance request presented tonight that uh, the positioning of the proposed new fence would be a continuation of an existing nonconformity. Okay, and Ed McGargy. I agree. Jessica? I agree. Jesse? I agree. And so do I. And that application is denied in part to the extent it relates to the uh, request for determination with respect to uh, the existing or continuation of an existing nonconformity and approved for the new relief that was originally sought with the original application. And with that, we are adjourned. Oh, go one, ahead. One, one cl clarification. Yeah. I, I, I heard replace the sidewalk. Is it repay, re, re, replace or repair? It's basically bringing up to code the same thing that's already on the subdivision plan? Yes. Or, or is it really replaced? Because I, I want to make sure that we don't stumble over that. I don't I don't understand the differentiation you're making. Please. Yeah. If, if there's existing good sidewalk there that they, they come out and inspect and it doesn't need to be replaced, you you, you take up the blocks that need to be replaced. To yeah. This, I, 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 Peter, if the sidewalk uh, uh, blocks are not broken right. um, and 
they would be the same currently in their current dimensions fit the requirements that you have imposed on you uh, and that it's within code to leave them in place, that's okay. I'm, we weren't insisting that they be removed and then poured with the same exact size. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that because it's it could be misinterpreted. Appreciate it. We're, we're not aware of all the agreements and uh, things that you may have on that. So whatever the township has ordered in other areas, you have to implement that agreed upon plan for the size of the sidewalk and whatnot. Yeah. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate your clarifying it. Okay, no problem. Thank you, Peter. Okay, A any administrative matters that we need to discuss? I mean, we can adjourn and then just have an executive session if anybody has anything they need to discuss. Jess, Jesse, Bill, Ed, anything? No. Nope. Okay, then we are adjourned. Everybody stay safe and we'll see you in a few weeks. Good night, gentlemen. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Bye. Bye.